we discussed up to now, what we discussed is a half-wave dipole antenna. When we say half-wave dipole antenna, its length is lambda by 2, which means we are in effect saying that this dipole is regenerating at uh, a particular frequency and uh, the, for that frequency you find out the wavelength. Half of that wavelength is the length of the antenna. If we use that antenna, then it will regenerate at the desired frequency. So these are all the regenerating antennas. So they are completely dependent on frequency. Dipole antennas are completely dependent on frequency. Most of the antennas that we design are completely dependent on frequency. Now once it is dependent on frequency, then it will have a finite bandwidth, very small bandwidth. Uh, if it has high quality factor, then it will have a small bandwidth, high quality factor or selectivity. I am sure you have read what is selectivity or quality factor when you have read RLC circuits. There you must have read what is Q factor or selectivity of an RLC circuit or in the acoustic you might have also studied. If you have studied sound, there also you would have seen what is selectivity. <clears throat> uh, so uh, they are these antennas are usually high selectivity antenna or high Q antennas. Their bandwidth will be very small. Uh, now, if there is a requirement of uh, a larger bandwidth, a broadband, then what we have to do is use multiple such antennas of different frequencies. So each antenna will radiate at different frequency. <clears throat> that is one solution. Uh, the solution that we are going to see is something like that. But uh, in that case, we will require very large number of antennas to cover a large frequency. There has to be some method to make the antenna frequency independent at least over a, a desired band of frequency. So the, if the antenna is frequency independent upon that band, which means the antenna is radiating or receiving over that band. So those type of antenna are called frequency independent antenna. The electrical characteristics, if you look at uh, uh, for the frequency independent antenna, the electrical characteristics of a frequency independent antenna is independent upon the operating frequency. The antenna will expand or contract in proportion to wavelength. Automatically, the antenna construction is such that it expands with as the wavelength expands, it contracts as the wavelength contracts. So antenna expands or contracts in proportional to wavelength. So if it expands or contracts, if it expands as the wavelength expands, then the frequency will change automatically for a larger antenna, you will have a smaller frequency. For a smaller antenna, we will have a larger frequency. Why? F is equal to C by lambda. So F is inversely proportional to lambda or wavelength. Wavelength increases, frequency decreases. Wavelength decreases, frequency increases. Wavelength is directly proportional to size of the antenna or length of the antenna. Therefore, wavelength increases, length of the antenna increases, or we can say wavelength of the antenna increases, frequency decreases, where length of the antenna decreases, frequency increases. Then the size of the radiating region in the antenna is proportional to the wavelength for mechanically rigid antennas. If the antenna is rigid mechanically, which means it cannot expand or contract, the antenna is fixed, size is fixed. One is antenna size is unvariable. So you can expand the antenna or you can contract the antenna. Simple example is if you, I don't know if you have this FM radio, look at an FM radio or a transistor radio. If you look at those antennas, they have an aerial or antenna. The antenna is folded in nature. You can uh, stretch it uh, and you can also contact it. So stretch it or you can squeeze it. Both the things you can do. So it has a particular length that is the smallest length 
is of the size of the radio then you can stretch it so it will elongate then you can squeeze it it will come down so that is where antenna expands or contracts proportional to wavelength so depending on which wavelength the radio is working you can stretch the antenna or so squeeze the antenna if that is not possible antenna size is fixed then the radiating region is proportional to wavelength for mechanically rigid uh, antenna so we have a region of radiation that is proportional to the wavelength common examples are log periodic dipole arrays planar spiral antennas these are common examples of frequency independent antenna now let us come on to the log periodic dipole array in short it is called lpda a log periodic is lp dipole array is it so lpda log periodic dipole array this is of interest to us if your course contains this so we will consider this one its electrical properties repeat log periodically in frequency now you know what is periodicity periodic function you have read uh, periodic function is f t cross capital t is equal to f small t so every capital t time it will repeat frequency repeat function repeats here instead of let that is a linear repetition here in the log scale it is repeating it is periodic in log scale so electrical properties repeat log periodically in frequency so frequency is repeating log periodically in terms of frequency the electrical properties repeat log periodically for this we require appropriate geometric structures which will ensure that it becomes frequency independent because it will repeat free log periodically second for expansion or contraction of the structure size that will change proportional to a constant scaling factor how uh, with each repetition of frequency it will change uh, um, proportional to a scaling factor now let us see what is log periodic when we say it is log periodic in frequency what is log periodic in frequency so on that will be like this log of fn plus 1 so fn is the nth frequency fn plus 1 is the n plus 1 frequency that will be equal to log of fn so fn frequency plus log tau tau is a constant so log of fn plus log tau so that gives you the periodicity log tau or periodicity so every log tau it will change so log fn plus 2 will be log fn plus 1 plus log tau log fn minus 1 will be log fn minus 2 plus log tau so log tau is the uh, periodicity it's yes, so a log periodicity in the log periodic scale it is repeating so then you can see uh if i take log fn to the left hand side it is log fn plus 1 minus log fn is equal to log tau or from that you can say log a minus log b is log a by b so use that so log fn plus 1 by fn is equal to log tau from that we can easily say that fn plus 1 by fn is equal to tau so for a log periodic frequency if the frequency is log periodically related then fn plus 1 by fn will be equal to tau if that happens then we will say that it is log periodically very so fn plus 1 by fn is equal to tau tau is a constant now how do you uh, get an antenna which will do this look at the picture here in the picture you can see there are many dipole antennas the dipole antennas are separated from one another and the length of the dipole antennas are different now on different lengths will correspond to different frequencies so between two antennas two dipoles any two consecutive dipoles the frequencies are such that fn plus if i take the nth dipole 
and n plus 1 dipole in the construction when we design the antenna the construction will be such that fn plus 1 by fn will be equal to tau will be constant so that is how we design now how to feed these antennas these antennas are fed in a manner that any two conjugative antennas are 100 out 80 degrees out of phase from each other so you can see if i look at the phase of the transmission line one is phase one is neutral if i consider this to be like that although that is not this not correct uh, way to say but uh, let us uh, for electrical engineers we say phase neutral so suppose the upper antenna first antenna upper part is connected to phase lower part is connected to neutral then the second antenna upper part is connected to neutral lower part is connected to phase third antenna upper part is connected to phase lower part is connected to neutral so this way it continues which means each antenna is fed 180 degree out of phase to its previous antenna so that is how you will feed the antennas for them to radiate so this is what is a log periodic antenna the log periodic frequency concept and the construction of log periodic antenna now uh, let us see in details the structure and operating principle of a log periodic antenna the spacing between elements is usually lambda by 2 now lambda is dependent on frequency and frequency is varying log periodically since frequency is varying log periodically lambda by 2 for one antenna and lambda by 2 for the other antenna is different therefore the spacing is also varying so since we are saying spacing is lambda by 2 the spacing will also vary according to the length of the antenna so this introduces a spatial phase difference now you know path difference and phase difference are related uh, phase difference is equal to 2 pi by lambda path difference now path difference is lambda by 2 spacing is lambda by 2 so path difference is lambda by 2 that into 2 pi by lambda beta is 2 pi by lambda so beta into lambda by 2 is equal to 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 2 that is called to pi so this introduces spatial phase difference of pi so between two elements the phase difference has to be pi or 180 degree so that you can see here in the figure the feeding will be in such a that in such a manner that the phase difference between adjacent elements is pi or 180 that you can see in the figure I have shown you cross sign is in the first element second is negative third is positive that way it goes so similarly for the lower element minus plus minus plus minus so this phasing this type of phasing they produce end fire pattern over a broad operating band so the pattern will be end fire for a log periodic antenna this shows that the pattern will be log periodic sorry pattern will be end fire in nature for a log periodic antenna the reason is the phasing between the elements this is an array and between the elements phasing is pi as we have already discussed seen in the end fire uh, for the end fire array antenna the phasing is pi so pi phase difference ensures end fire uh, operation so phasing is pi so this is going to give us end fire operation so this is the principle and structure okay now let us look at a proper antenna so this you can see a proper antenna proper log periodic antenna you can see we are using a transmission line section oh, okay the transmission line section is called this section is called the loaded section then from the end of the load loaded line to the first element is called inactive region in this case l is less than lambda by 2 so that is the inactive region then we have active region where l is equal to 
lambda by 2 l is approximately equal to lambda by 2. Then we have reflective region where l is greater than lambda by 2. Try to remember the Yagi Uda antenna. We have a reflector whose length was larger than the driver or drive, driving antenna. Driving antenna length was lambda by 2. Therefore, when here length is greater than lambda by 2, those elements are reflective elements. That region is called reflective region. Whereas the length is approximately lambda by 2, that region is called active region. Those elements are contributing to radiation. Before that, we have this uh, director type of thing. Those are inactive regions. So as you keep on changing the frequency, these regions will keep on changing. Okay. Then consider the antenna distance, the distance of the antenna from the feed point uh, to the last element, n, th n plus 1th element. Let us call that distance to be Rn plus 1. Uh, the nth element uh, distance is Rn. Length of the dipole for n, n plus 1th element is Ln plus 1. Length of the dipole for nth element is Ln. The, if you do join the tip of the antennas, then they will form an, a triangle. The apex of the triangle will make an angle alpha. This angle alpha is called the apex angle or the input angle. So this is about the structure of the antenna. Now let us consider different regions. Change Cordela. So we'll start with the inactive region. In the inactive region, L is less than lambda by 2. Lambda is the operating frequency. Remember, lambda is operating frequency. It is changing. So L will keep on changing. So L is lambda by L, L is less than lambda by 2. That region is called the inactive region. Here, small element current is leading base voltage by pi by 2 in the inactive region. Pi phase difference between adjacent dipoles is due to feeding that ensures that small current in elements is in the region. There are small currents and small backward radiation are there. So inactive region results in small backward radiation. There won't be any more or high backward radiation. Now you can see what is the forward direction, what is the backward direction. Forward direction is from the direction or from the feeding side. Backward direction is towards the largest element. Since the largest element is the deflector, so in that direction the radiation will be small. In the opposite direction there will be maximum radiation. So small current in elements in this region is there and small backward radiation is there in the inactive region. Then we will come to the active region. L is approximately lambda by 2. So you have large element current since it is approximately lambda by 2, it will be in resonance. Because of resonance, we will have large current. So large element current which are in phase with the base voltage. Base voltage mean, means the feeding voltage. And the feed point, what is the voltage? That is the base voltage. Therefore, we will get resistive impedance in this region. So in the active region, the impedance will be resistive in nature. By the time the field is radiated from element L plus ln plus 1 and that arrives at ln, the phase of ln will advance by pi by 2 uh, or by 90 degree. And the, why? Because it is lambda by 2 separated. Since lambda by 2 separated, it will advance by pi by 2 and its field will add to the field of ln plus 1 element in phase. Since it will be added in phase, that will be producing a directive resultant field towards the left side, which is towards the forward side. So following entire principle. Therefore, we have strong field to left, weak field 
to the right. In the active region, strong field towards left, weak field towards the right. Then, an inactive region which is reflective in nature. So, in that case, L is greater than lambda by 2. Inductive impedance as current lacks the voltage. Presents large reactive impedance to the feed line. Reflects all incident signals from the active region to the left side. So, that is the job of the unreactive region. So, this is about the three regions of the log periodic antenna. Now, let us consider the design parameters of the log periodic antenna. What are the design parameters? You will be given the frequency. Frequency is proportional to 1 by lambda. For dipole antenna, L is equal to lambda by 2. F is proportional to 1 by lambda. So, Fn plus 1 by Fn is equal to tau that we can write as ln by ln plus 1 because f is proportional to 1 by l so fn plus 1 by fn is same as ln by ln plus 1 so fn plus uh, fn plus 1 by fn which is equal to tau that we have seen that is equal to ln by ln plus 1 ln is the length of the nth element of the antenna similarly scaling all lengths as per frequency we will get Fn by Fn plus 1, that is equal to Ln plus 1 by Ln, that is equal to Rn plus 1 by Rn, that is equal to Sn plus 1 by Sn. Sn is the frequency uh, separation between elements, and that is equal to Dn plus 1 by and Dn, that is the diameter of the uh, elements, the element, each element, uh, each dipole element, Dn plus 1 by Dn that is called 2 1 by tau because fn plus 1 by fn is equal to tau fn by fn plus 1 is equal to 1 by tau tau is called the periodicity factor or scaling factor or the design ratio sigma is called the spacing factor and sigma is equal to rn plus 1 minus rn by 2 ln that is what is sigma Sigma is equal to Rn plus 1 minus Rn by 2 ln, which is equal to Sn by 2 ln. Rn plus 1 minus Rn is equal to Sn, that is the separation between two elements. Uh, so Rn plus 1 minus Rn by uh, Rn plus 1 minus Rn is Sn. So Sn by 2 ln is equal to sigma or spacing factor. Then included angle alpha is constant for a and log periodic antenna once you design the antenna uh, alpha is equal to constant okay. uh, now let us look at the upper half and let us consider only two elements other elements are there we are not showing them in the picture the two elements are the n plus one element and n element upper half we are seeing therefore upper half for some will be ln plus 1 by 2 for the nth element it will be ln by 2 total length is ln so upper half is ln by 2 similarly for the n plus 1 element total length is ln plus 1 so it is ln plus 1 by 2 and now see this picture in this picture we have this is this shows you two right angle triangles for one triangle um, the distance is uh, distance from the apex to the edge is Rn plus 1 when we are considering the Ln plus 1 thing. For the second element, second one Ln, the distance from the apex to this Ln is Rn. And the angle is alpha by 2, total angle is alpha, we are considering half of that, so angle is alpha by 2. Separation between Rn plus 1 and Rn is S. So all those are given. Now, from the triangle, use simple uh, geometry or trigonometry or mensuration, whatever you want, what you have read in the high school, ln plus 1 by 2 divided by ln by 2. Base of the larger triangle by base of the smaller triangle is equal to side of the larger triangle by side of the smaller triangle. So ln plus 1 by 2 divided by ln by 2 is equal to Rn plus 1 by Rn. So 
So that implies that ln plus one by ln minus one is equal to rn plus one by rn minus one. On both the sides, I have subtracted one on the left hand side and right hand side. So that gives us ln plus one minus ln by ln is equal to rn plus one minus rn whole divided by rn. Now you know uh, uh, from this we can say ln plus one minus rn. Divided by R n plus one minus R n is equal to L n by R n. That we can say two times uh, L n by two divided uh, divided by R n. What we have done is divided uh, the, the numerator is divided by two and we have multiplied it by two. Now use H is equal to R n plus one minus R n and tan alpha by two is equal to L n by two by R n. From the triangle, you can see ln by 2 divided by rn is equal to tan alpha by 2. So use that. If we use that, then we can say ln plus 1 minus ln by s is equal to 2 times tan alpha by 2. Or tan alpha by 2 is equal to ln plus 1 minus ln by 2 times s. So this is one design parameter related to alpha. We are relating alpha with a and s, length and separation. Now those are related like this. Okay. Next, ah. Huh. Now we have seen tan alpha by two is equal to ln plus one by two s whole into one minus ln by ln plus one. That we can say is equal to ln plus one by two s into one minus one by k. Where k is equal to ln plus one by ln, ln plus one by ln is equal to one by tau. As ln by ln plus one is equal to tau, so ln plus one by ln is equal to one by tau, or k is equal to one by tau. In the active region, ln plus one is equal to lambda by two. So that implies that tan alpha by two is equal to lambda by two s into one by two. So that is lambda by four s. So lambda by 4s into 1 minus k, how 1 minus 1 by k, so that we can write as 1 by 4 into s by lambda, lambda by s is equal to 1 by s by lambda, so that is what we are writing, 1 by 4 into s by lambda into 1 minus tau because 1 by k is equal to tau. So from this we can say alpha by two is equal to tan inverse one minus tau by four sigma. S by lambda is equal to sigma. Therefore tan inverse one minus tau by four sigma. From this we can say alpha is equal to two times tan inverse one minus tau whole divided by four sigma. And now we know R n plus one is greater than R n. That implies that R n by R n plus one is less than one, which implies tau has to be less than one and k has to be greater than one, because k is equal to one by tau, so k has to be greater than one, tau has to be less than one. Then let us summarize uh, how what we discussed. Tau is equal to R n by R n plus one. Or ln by ln plus one, sigma is equal to ln plus one minus ln by two ln, which is equal to sn by two ln because ln plus one minus ln is equal to sn. That is equal to one minus tau by four times tan uh, alpha by two. Alpha is equal to two tan inverse one minus tau by four sigma. Ln is equal to tau into ln plus one. That is equal to ln by 2 tan of alpha by 2. Sn is equal to rn minus rn plus 1 minus rn. That is equal to rn plus 1 into 1 minus tau. Fn plus 1 by Fn is equal to tau. So F2 by F1 is equal to tau. F3 by F2 is equal to tau. From that we can say F3 by F1 is equal to F3 by F2 into F2 by F1. That is equal to tau square. Or f3 is equal to tau square into f1, or you can say f3 is equal to 
tau to the power 3 minus 1 by into f1 or fn plus 1. In this way, by induction, you can say fn plus 1 is equal to tau to the power n into f1. So, on this also we know the highest frequency and the lowest frequency, the relationship between highest frequency and lowest frequency. Upper frequency fu is f1 and lower frequency fl is fn plus 1. So this relationship we have got. So fl is equal to tau to the power n into fu or fl by fu is equal to tau to the power n or n is equal to number of elements, n is number of elements, number of elements is equal to log of fl minus log of fu divided by log of tau. Now what are the typical characteristics of the antenna? Uh, you can see both the radiation patterns are shown here, the H plane pattern and the E plane pattern, both are from the, uh, both are end fire radiation, they are towards the smaller element from the larger element, there is a small amount of radiation in the backward direction. On the um, H plane pattern is slightly broader compared to the E plane pattern or E plane pattern is more directive compared to the H plane pattern. Gain is between 7 to 12 dB. Tau is between 0 and 1. Input impedance is between 50 ohm to 200 ohms. Alpha usually is 30 degree. Tau uh, typically is 0 0.7 in a typical uh, antenna configuration. So these are the typical characteristics of a log periodic antenna. Applications of log periodic antenna you can find in high frequency communication for multiband steerable and fixed antennas, for television reception antennas. One log periodic antenna covers almost all channels up to the UHF band. UHF means uh, ultra high frequency band. So up to that band, one antenna covers, one log periodic antenna covers all the frequencies required for television operation. So with this, we come to end of uh, what we have discussed. So we'll stop here. Little, little.